Hi, I'm Simon from Syntax Audio UK and today I'm taking a look at the Apsis Multiverter MVR64. The function of the Multiverter is to convert between a wide range of audio formats and because of the number of different formats available it offers a very flexible converter in a one new box. When combined with the Add-on Sample Rate Converter Module or SRC the Multiverse can not only convert between any of the available formats, it can also do this regardless of the sample rate and clocking of each individual format. All the main I.O. connections are found on the rear panel of the Multiverter. The Multiverter is equipped with two AC inlets and a DC inlet. The AC connectors provide redundancy on the mains power connection. The DC inlet allows the Multiverter to be powered from a number of DC sources. The Multiverter provides MIDI in and out for preset recall, as well as for providing an input and output for MIDI to be embedded onto a MADI audio stream. The USB port is used to provide command line remote control and is also available for software updates. Moving along, we find the word clock input and output, which use traditional BNC connections. The Multiverter is equipped with 8 ADAT input and 8 output ports, giving you a total of 64 channels of ADAT in and out of the Multiverter. The MVR64 also has SMUX functionality, meaning the ADAT ports can be used at up to 192 kHz sample rate. A pair of RJ45s are available for Dante connection. This connection acts as a Brooklyn 2 module, so the two connectors can either be configured to work as a single redundant connection or can be configured to daisy chain the Dante stream onto another Dante enabled device. The Multiverter also features an AES50 port and MADI TP or Twisted Pair port. AES50 is a format used by Behringer and Midas mixing consoles as audio transport to stage boxes. MADI Twisted Pair is a MADI signal that is carried on a Cat5 style cable and is used by audio mixing companies such as Digico, Soundcraft, and Studer for their stage box connections. As standard, you can use both audio formats to connect to different audio consoles. But both of these ports can be reconfigured if you only need to run one or other format, but you want to run higher channel counts and so need to use both connections. Further along the back of the Multiverter, we come to the more common MADI connections on both BNC and Multimode Fibre. Including the Twisted Pair connection, the Multiverter has a total of 192 MADI channels available. Next up, we can find an RS-485 connection. This works in a similar way to the MIDI connection, so where a console manufacturer, such as Yamaha, needs to send RS-485 control data to a remote device, then the data is connected to this port. Under the PC port is the extension port. It is used for connecting one multiverter to another to add a further 64 channels of format conversion. It can also connect to the MADI TP inline pinout converter to provide it with power. Now let's spin the multiverter round to see what's possible on the control panel. Starting with the routing controls, we can see a matrix that indicates where the different inputs are routed. So the column down the side indicates where the signal is coming from, and the top row shows where it's routed to. To make or break a connection in the routing matrix, first you need to push the set button in the routing menu. A yellow blinking cursor indicates the routing point you are currently selecting. You can change the patch point for selection by turning the encoder to the desired point where you want to make or break a connection. At the beginning or end of the line, continue to turn the encoder to make the cursor wrap around to the previous or next line. Push the encoder or press the set button to make or break a connection. Moving to the next block on the front panel, we can see the clock setup panel. This will set the clock source for the multiverter main clock. It is set in a similar way to the routing. You can enter the setup mode by pressing the set button, then you can turn the encoder through the various selection options until you get the option you would like to choose. For some of the choices, you'll need to make a second selection. For instance, if you choose the internal clock, then you must follow that by choosing which internal frequency you'd like to run. If you have the SRC board fitted, then the clock that will be used for the second clock domain can also be set from the panel. Moving further along the front panel, we find the monitor section. The monitor section allows you to listen to a single channel or a stereo pair from any of the audio sources in the multiverter. Pressing the set button and turning the encoder allows you to choose which one of the source streams you want to choose a channel from. By pressing the encoder you can choose to either adjust the source channel or the volume as indicated by the LED next to the number display above the phone socket. 
final section to look at on the front panel is the preset section. Once you're happy with all the settings you've made in the previous three sections, then you can save this as a preset. A preset can be stored by pressing the store button, then turning the encoder to the location you wish to store it in. Similarly, you can recall stored presets by pressing the recall button. Turn the encoder until the correct preset is indicated, then a press of the encoder will recall the preset or the back button will cancel. The multiverter can be configured just by using the front panel controls, but there's an extra level of refinement you can achieve by using the web interface. The interface is accessed via the Dante port. Once the web interface is connected, you'll see that the multiverter is capable of channel by channel routing, rather than the full stream option that you have with the front panel. You can also see a clearly laid out page that gives you an overview of the clock setup and you can also see which audio streams are assigned to the main and the ASRC clock domains when the SRC is fitted. So the standard multiverter offers a very flexible format converter, but it really comes into its own when you add the SRC or sample rate converter board in. The SRC option is an add-on module that must be installed inside the multiverter and allows you to run two different word clock domains, potentially with completely different clock sources and frequencies while still being able to format convert across these domains. It also allows you to select which formats will be in which domain, so you're free to decide where each clock master will come from and which formats will be clocked to which clock master. What this means in practice is you can connect a number of audio domains together and share audio sources between those domains. So this could be for joining two stages together at a major live event. Both of those stages could be running different audio consoles with different audio formats at different frequencies. The multiverter allows you to just join those two streams together, combine them and share sources between them. This could also be for an OB truck where you arrive at an event, you don't know what format the audio sources are going to be in, you don't know what clock frequency they're going to be in, you can just plug in the local source into the truck, no need to re-clock anything, it'll just work. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch our video. If you'd like to learn more or if you'd like to organise a demo then please get in touch.